Hi everyone, today I want to talk about my goals for 2023. I'm really bad at reflecting back on my goals and honestly keeping up with them, so I don't entirely remember what my goals were for 2022, but I know that I didn't fulfill all of them, if any of them. Two of my goals were very prescribed in terms of things I wanted to read. I made a list of 12 things I wanted to reread and 12 five-star predictions. I didn't end up finishing either of those lists. I lost a lot of steam and momentum. So I've learned that that is not the way to go for me exactly to have like a set prescribed list of certain things I need to get to. Um, it's nice to have piles to pull from. And I think the intentionality is good because I did end up rereading 11 books last year. Just they didn't all happen to be on the list that I originally made. So I'm going to try and keep some of those intentions and goals and try on new ones as I always do. Of course, there will also be reading projects. Um, I was very focused last year on trying to figure out what my favorite book of all time is. And I still don't have a definitive answer to that question. But I know that, you know, Life After Life, Severance, Revolutionary Road, Station Eleven, they all are up there, and that is frankly, I think, good enough for me right now. But now I have new things I wanna try out, so let's just talk about what I hope to do in the coming year. I have a lot of things, exciting things I want to try. I don't think that they're overly ambitious, but uh, it just helps keep my reading interesting, makes it sort of like a game for me in some ways, keeps me reading different things, very reading varied things, and also trying to knock down my TBR. So a video that I just put up a couple days ago is talking about the books that are sort of on my last chance list for the year. Um, I don't know how many books are on there. So that is a prescribed list of sorts, but they're books that I already own and theoretically have wanted to read for the duration that I've owned them, which in many cases is over five years. So I'm basically challenging myself saying, prove it. If you want to read those books, then read those books. And if you don't get to them this year, you probably should get rid of them. So it's like a gentle threat, um, more than a goal, I guess, or like a really specific prescribed list. But it's just like a way of saying, hey, these books exist and now they're separated out. Don't forget about them anymore. I really enjoyed rereading in 2022. So I also would like to keep up that habit of just like rereading about one book per month. I think that that is very doable, but I'm not going to specify which books I'm going to reread. So hopefully I can reread about 12 books this year. We'll see if I care about rereading as the year goes on, but I think it's a nice habit to get into. You know, a lot of my favorite books from 2022 were books that I reread, which is good and bad, I guess. Um, but I read a lot of books that I enjoyed and isn't that the point of all of this? So I think that that is fine. Um, another goal I have is that I would really like to keep track of my bookish spending. I'm really focusing on budgeting this year, you know, really working on paying down my student loan and just keeping everything on track. This will be the first year that I'm not planning a cross country move or job change of any sort uh, in a long, long time, possibly ever in my adulthood, in my 20s, where I feel stable. I don't have any plans to change my job or move in the next year. So I can focus on hopefully saving money versus spending money on these really expensive moves and in life pivots that I have gone through over the past decade. So um, I want part of that to be, I'm going to be keeping track of like all of my spending and budgeting, but I thought it'd be fun to keep track specifically of how much I've spent on books this year. I have seen Rincey and Marty Ness do the same thing. I basically want to follow suit and see how much I actually spend because I frankly have no idea. And I also thought it might be fun to incorporate into that. How much do I save uh, based on using the library and getting advanced copies? How much money does that actually save me? I don't want to like make it too much about me bragging about getting ARCs. So I'm not entirely sure if I want to include that portion, but certainly for things that I choose to get from the library, especially if I was originally considering buying that item and buying that item new, keeping track of how much money I save by in instead choosing the library. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to somehow try and incorporate like books that I finish, book that, books that I enjoy, books that I DNF, because, you know, DNFs are essentially wasted money if I bought it and then didn't even like it to the point where I could finish it. So I'm going to play around with this idea, but the general concept is tracking my bookish spending. It shouldn't be too hard because I don't have any bookish subscriptions. I'm not a member of 
Scribd or Audible or anything like that. I'm not a book of the month member. So it's mostly just like self-directed buying. So I'm interested in how much I spend. I would like to do 12 rounds of my shelf actualization project, which I started last year and stole basically from Stephanie Bookish. But it's this idea where I ask my bookish friends here on booktube to pick two books from my TBR and I vlog my reading experience of them. I've already asked Mercedes to do January for me. So I will be reading two books that she picked for me in this month, which I'm really excited about. It just is a way of, of getting someone else's eyes on my TBR and having them pick something for me. And then me basically talking through my experience of it. So it helps me get my TBR down, helps me make videos kind of with my friends ish inspired by my friends. So, um, yeah, there's, there's that one. I would like to do one per month. I set my story graph goal for the year at a hundred books. I'm not sure if I want to up that or not. I, Last year didn't necessarily read the most number of books I've ever read, but I certainly read the most number of pages I've ever, ever read. It was over 37,000 pages. And just if Storygraph's stats are correct from what I exported from Goodreads, which I've had a Goodreads account since 2012, it was the most pages I've ever read, which is fantastic. Um, but I would maybe like to read some shorter books because I read I think 10 books last year that were over 500 pages. And I tend to shy away from shorter books on my shelf for whatever reason. So trying to prioritize those, it'll mean I get through more things, which is also a win-win. So I'm not sure if I'm going to bump it up from 100, but for but I think 100 is a good baseline for me. It means that I'm making reading enough of, of a priority, which often is not a problem, but sometimes I go through phases where I'm not really into it. And I need to remind myself that this is actually a hobby that I enjoy and that there are books out there that I will like. So to that end, and I have a couple of series that I'm hoping to read and love this year. One is the Winds of the Foreland series, which I own the entirety of. I purchased a couple months ago the whole series on Pango because I mostly just wanted the first book, but they are out of print. You can only really get like mass market secondhand copies. So I just decided to say, fuck it. I'm gonna buy them all. It was very cheap. So um, hopefully I like the series and I can read it all, but you know, at the very least I'll read the first one and then decide if I want to read the series to completion. But if I do like it, I would like to read the whole series. Um, and then I also really wanna read the Rainwild Chronicles this year, which is four books. It's the fourth series in Robin Hobb's Realm of the Elderlings, which I've been reading on and off since like 2015. So it would be nice to make a big leap in progress in that series this year because I read the Tawny Man trilogy in less than a year um, between the end of 2021 and throughout 2022. And it just felt so gratifying to read those books rel in relatively close um, time to one another. It helped me remember what was going on and kept up my investment in what was happening in the moment. It was devastating as well. And I really want to know what's going to happen with Fitz and, and everyone else in the next trilogy, but I have to get through Rain Wild first. And that is four books, but they are shorter. I don't own any of them yet, so I will have to purchase them at some point, and I will be buying the UK copies because they're my preference. Um, but I would like to prioritize reading Rain Wild Chronicles because I don't want to keep reading this series for the first time forever. I want to actually finish it one day. Um, that'll probably be next year's problem. And then my last goal for this year, and I remember this was a goal of mine last year, which was to embrace the DNF. And now I think I did this pretty well. I DNF'd between 20 and 30 books last year, but there are quite a few books that looking back on my year, I should not have finished because I was not enjoying them. And me pushing myself to the end of the book did not impact my enjoyment of the book. Um, if I wasn't enjoying it, I probably wasn't going to enjoy it for the rest of it. Things like Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow or Our Missing Hearts. I mean, ideally, like I wouldn't have even started those books because I, I, you know, I didn't know if I'd like them or not. And very early on in the book, I knew that I wasn't super enjoying it, but I was always hoping for a turnaround for it to really surprise me in the final half. And that doesn't happen very often. If you're not liking the first half of a book, it's very likely that you will not enjoy the second half of the book, especially to the point where it redeems the first half. I don't know. I just think that I need to be more aggressive with my DNFs than I even was last year. Because, you know, I want more time to read books that I'm loving. And I just think that I could have had so many more four and five star reads last year if I had been better at picking books in the first place and not taking as many stupid risks on things that were likely to not be wins. Um, but also just like, 
moving on from things that I wasn't actively enjoying. A three star is fine, but it is a little bit of a letdown because it's kind of a nothing burger of a rating. You know, I liked it okay. Didn't do anything to knock my socks off. It didn't defend me, but you know, I don't wanna feel meh about my reading life. I wanna be excited about it and passionate about it one way or the other, um, preferably toward the positive side. So that's my last goal for 2023. Like I said, I think these are generally pretty basic, pretty simple, pretty achievable, and pretty easy to remember that I wanna do because if I'm tracking my spending, if I'm asking people to do the shelf actualization project with me, then you know I will remember to keep doing them throughout the year. Will I look back on this? Will I remember these goals? Only future me knows, but that's okay. Um, I'd love to know your thoughts on my goals for the year. If you have any tips or tricks for achieving my goals, I would love to hear it. And what are your goals for 2023? Let's hope that it's a better year than the last few years we've had. We deserve it. Um, I am looking forward to the coming year. As of now, I have, I'm, I'm hopeful, I'm excited, and I'm ready to read some damn good books. So join me on that. Please subscribe if you want to see more of my bookish content. I also have a Patreon and a Pango if you want to somehow financially support me. All that money goes toward paying my student loans. So uh, it's always super helpful if you want to do that. But you also support me by just being here. So thank you so much. I am very grateful that you're here. Happy New Year. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.